Hello everyone, this is our science teacher Tim Martin, and this is Meteorology Part 18, continuing our look at severe weather with a look at thunderstorms. Thunderstorms are dramatic, strong storms with lightning, thunder, and very strong winds. Lightning can be beautiful at times. Lightning itself is formed by electrical charge separation as ice particles move around in large cumulonimbus clouds. This deserves a whole video that I'll have to work on later. But for now, let's look at the storm itself. There are two basic ingredients for thunderstorm formation. We need plentiful moisture and unstable air. Unstable air means that convection can very easily take place. In order to accelerate convection, we need very cold air aloft that allows the warm surface air to rise quickly. There are three stages of thunderstorm development, starting with the cumulus stage. As warm moist air near the surface rises, it can form a large developing cumulus cloud. This may eventually become a cumulus congestus cloud. If the development continues, we can see a full cumulonimbus cloud. This is when the storm has reached its mature stage. Violently rising air with strong updrafts lift air high into the atmosphere. As that water vapor condenses, heavy rain may be formed. Strong winds and hail and lightning are often possible with these storms. You see here a large developing cumulonimbus cloud over the canyon country of Utah and a view from the underside of a cumulonimbus cloud where it's pouring rain. Eventually, for a typical thunderstorm, it will dissipate rather quickly. The strong downdrafts created by the falling rain cut off the warm updraft Essentially, the storm will cut off its fuel source, and it quickly dissipates. Here we see a dissipating storm over the mountains near Death Valley, California. There are four general types of thunderstorms, the single cell, multi-cell, multi-cell line or squall line, and the supercell. Let's take a look at each. The single cell storm is probably the most common thunderstorms, especially for those of us in the southeastern United States sometimes referred to as air mass thunderstorms, these are the typical small afternoon thunderstorms. They tend to last 30 to 40 minutes. Here we see a small single storm from the perspective of an airplane. This is over central New Mexico. The picture on the lower right shows a typical rain shower. Rain showers associated with cumulonimbus cloud are often very small and over fairly quickly. A multi-cell storm helps explain why sometimes you know that there has been a thunderstorm that has lasted longer than 30 or 45 minutes. In this image, over a neighboring farm in Guilford County, North Carolina, we can see one cell here on the left, another cell, and another cell, and another developing cumulus cloud over here. With the progression of a multi-cell storm, one cell may follow the next, which follows the next, and this will seem like the storm goes for a much longer period of time, but each individual cell follows the life cycle, lasting 30 to 45 minutes. Here we see a multi-cell cluster over the North Carolina-Virginia border, and you can see in the radar image there are several areas varying intensity precipitation. The squall line we have discussed earlier this happens when a line of storms precedes a fast-moving cold front. Here we see an incredibly long squall line stretching from the United States Canadian border all the way down to the southern tip of Texas. Frequently squall lines are much smaller. Here's a shorter one that extends across Virginia and North Carolina with a little bit reaching out into Tennessee. From the satellite perspective and from the radar perspective we can see a line of very intense, strong storms. If you're on the ground when a squall line comes, a lot of times it may be preceded by a shelf cloud. The shelf cloud is condensation that happens right on the cold front boundary. On the ground, you'll experience strong straight line winds. Finally, there's the supercell storm. A huge, enormous storm may be reaching as much as 12 kilometers or eight, seven to eight miles into the atmosphere. This particular supercell storm over central North Carolina extended from very close to the Earth's surface up to the edge of the troposphere. 
We often refer to this as an anvil-shaped storm, similar to a blacksmith's anvil. High-altitude winds elongate the top of the storm, in this case stretching it out to the right. Supercell storms often include violent and severe weather. This particular supercell storm did produce tornadoes that caused several fatalities. Here we see another supercell storm over north central Indiana. Finally, I've mentioned severe storms several times. What makes a storm severe? Any thunderstorm can be called severe if it meets one of the following three criteria. If it has winds that exceed 50 knots, that's approximately 58 miles an hour. You can identify these strong winds as this is the kind of wind that will cause large branches to break. You can see this limb is about eight inches in diameter. Breaking large, healthy tree limbs is a sign of extremely strong wind. Another characteristic of severe storms is to have hail that's greater than three quarters of an inch. Smaller hail may be relatively common and not do much damage. When hail is larger than a marble or larger than three quarters of an inch, it can cause considerable damages to buildings, agricultural crops, and automobiles that are outside in the storm. The picture on the right shows large, almost golf ball sized hailstones that fell over Greensboro, North Carolina on Mother's Day 2006. Finally, the third characteristic of a severe thunderstorm happens if it produces a tornado. Here we see a wall cloud below the condensation level and a condensation funnel below that. Technically, this was not a tornado because it did not come in contact with the earth. The rotating funnel below the cloud was simply a condensation cloud or a funnel cloud. In order to become a tornado, it actually needs to contact and create damage on the ground. That concludes this brief discussion of thunderstorms. In our next video, we'll take a look at tornadoes and tornado formation. Thanks for watching and have a great day.